Welcome back to our ongoing Office 365 series. So today we are going to see the next tab in protection.office.com. This is how when you fire up the uh, machine it greets you with uh, Microsoft Teams. So it doesn't matter how hard I try, I cannot get uh, Skype to work. Maybe they have blocked it for new uh, accounts or maybe it's not part of the um, of business premium so let's go to security and compliance here and we saw the records management that was the last one let's see information governance so information governance is like um, if you know software lifecycle is exactly like that that uh, information was created in terms of email files or sites or anything that is your users create while performing their day-to-day -day work and that information has a life to it it was not there somebody created it then you want to for compliance you have a policy or a regulation that you have to follow that it has to be kept this long and then there is another policy which dictates what data needs to be gone from your system once the user leaves or once this happens so that is the comp complete life cycle that how long you're gonna keep it retain it and when you need to destroy it or delete it that's the thing that's uh, in everything is in information governance so if we see we have different tiles over here information governance toolbox let's click on it so it says toolbox we have import data we can import it bring data into office 365 and increase email storage so you can use our tools to govern it so you can bring data so if you have a server exchange server you're running it over there from here you can import everybody uh, to the office 365 and then you can increase mailbox storage if you don't know why you want to do that because you want to retain that data that's why they're gonna increase your mailbox it says govern how to create a label we saw uh, in the video about classification that we can create labels and then through those labels we can retain uh, that data that can be any file email site anything we can publish label we did publish label if you remember auto apply label is again that <coughs> policy will be applied and when it detects something it will automatically apply label to that so it's search easily searchable create a retention policy how long you want that data to be stored and when that limit is over for example we saw it's seven years and after seven years what happens to that does office 365 delete it for you or you want to keep it and then go do it do the deletion manually manage events it was the record management that is that if an event has happened like a user left you will create an uh, event saying employment ended and create a supervision policy So these are the uh, uh, on management the label will be created for those events manage uh, capture email and third-party communications this is very important I think we talked about it way um, a little while ago uh, when we were talking about the compliance thing uh, in I think it was in exchange that about the communication like if for some industries everything needs to be uh, kept like what was said what was promised and all that security uh, SEC stocks and uh, securities and exchange commission something like that so for financial uh, institutes it's, it's uh, very strict laws so they want to keep everything from text to audio video phone calls chat messages emails everything needs to be uh, put together in a place where when if the situation arises they can go and review monitor and respond set up alert policies so it's like you can track label usage what labels are being used 
uh, like you set up on policy and but you don't know what label is being uh, used more often by label it's like data mining thing through labels you would know that which is a hot topic right now for example if the la for example we created a label name yammer so if we see the yammer label having uh, more files attached to it and when search is um, pulling more data then you know that yeah it's pretty hard and uh, people are talking or working uh, with files and emails that uh, include that term set up alert policies again if you remember we set uh, policy when the <coughs> in alerts in here when the admin got the alert in his email address and then it showed up under alerts as well so this basically i believe pretty much is a combination of everything in uh, above it let's close of it and these are again tiles how labels were applied no data is because right now nothing's uh, nobody's being uh, using office 365 and no data is created what are the top five labels? they will show up here like what are the most labels uh, being applied label trend over the past 90 days so it's really the compliance thing govern govern and stay compliant online archive mailbox your content at uh, glare how many emails are there sharepoint what are the onedrive files third party skype all that so do you have a retention policy it's not there your content over time how it's growing up so obviously i was not there in 2004 it's just a graph so mine will start should start somewhere 2019 that's not even here but you get the picture like it will show you the graph how the data grew so you will say okay in this year it wasn't really nothing it really started picking after 2009 between uh, in 2005 it was the sharpest trend going upwards like we created the most data here based on this angle and it was a continuous trend from the previous year and every year it's uh, going uh, better or doing uh, upwards so import PST file so there are <coughs> two types of outlook uh, files one is PST the other one is OST the difference between OST O if you want to do P as a personal and O as uh, offline so PST cannot be used while offline and it is stored as a backup of a user's um, inbox or whatever the email account on users email uh, sorry users uh, personal drive hardware uh, and his computers hardware with the OST offline that is a file that is stored on exchange server like and user can see the emails that were down already downloaded in a exchange um, an outlook he can even reply to them while off being offline like there is no internet connection how it does happen everything is being done offline and saved so as soon as the um, connection is restored they get sent out or they get sent in a notification that these emails have been read so so this is about like import PST file archive third-party data and this is like uh, uh, you want to get the SDK software development kit you get want to get data from other sites that is you have no control over them but you have a connection that allows them uh, their services with, with your office 365 to get the data so this is all about import so to import uh, a file a PST file it's, it will show you the trend but they have to do it over there so let's see archive what has been archived it will show up here so archive mailbox is it's like a, if you have two drives on a computer so one is the backup drive so archive is the backup uh, inbox for your main uh, email inbox so what happens is it's saying that if anything is older than two years it's automatically moved to the archive mailbox by the default so this is for 
your server to not to be uh, not to feel the load of uh, moving that much data because uh, especially in domain environment when you go from computer to computer like hotel seating where you don't have a desk of your own and every day you are sitting on a new computer uh, if you log into your outlook you will see a message pop up which will say that uh, not all of your email is available immediately it will basically show you the very top hundred or some and it would say it will take uh, uh, it could take many moments before all of your inbox is available uh, locally on your computer so that time it's quickly getting everything downloaded on that computer's hard drive from the server i see it uh, <laughs> i never saw it but just last week we were transferred to an area that is more congested and now uh, for the past uh, four days i had to sit four different uh, computers and i see each time i log in i see that message so that is about this that archive is that uh, <clears throat> so imagine if you have 2000 emails every year so essentially the server has 8000 emails for you for the past four years right or if it's like uh, it was five years then 10,000 emails let's suppose now when I log into a computer it's gonna download all 10,000 of those emails to my local uh, computer yeah that's a pretty small example right imagine 1700 people's each sitting up sitting on a new computer every day and each user has 10,000 emails and it has to be downloaded imagine the burden right so that's why the archive inbox is used that to uh, shed the load from the server that they will be on that so server now only has to deal my 4000 emails at a time and if i need something then I can click on archive and search it from over there. Again, it will take time, but yeah, but for day to day, it saves the server's loads time. So you see for the archive, all the email boxes are disabled. I can click and enable for Ali. Let's go ahead and do that. Mailbox usage, Ali has used it only 30 megabytes. Again, it's gonna work. okay so and it has the 50 GB limit for the inbox in and then it will warn at 98 percent we saw these warnings and uh, these things when we were doing the other video about exchange and all that so we see the policies there let's see it's a little bit slow i think so we can go and aslan we can enable it for aslan like i want to enable it and then we'll go talk about retention and we'll come back to this and see what's here let's go enable it here and then go to um enable it for him as well so oh, this one oh for him it's already enabled but it says disable here I'm Ron H okay enable I think that it was showing for Aslan probably but still everything is disabled so let's go and talk about retention then we will come back here and see if the changes have uh, taking place or not so retention so it loaded we have the labels label policies if you remember from the previous video it's a lot of re repetition with office 365 maybe they will quickly want you to go over there and click here and then go to that thing so you see this the, we created these two policies uh, last night <clears throat> we played with them US financial data taste that poli test policy we applied it we got the confirmation or uh, the alert emails and all that so it's saying is they saying <clears throat> exactly what I said 
your user generates a lot of content every day take control of, control of it by setting up retention policies what to keep and what to get rid of and <clears throat> so this is pretty much it we can create a policy here if we go through it it's gonna be exactly the same like name your policy setting location where it's applied everything so like I said it's a repetition of whatever we saw earlier above so let's wrap this oh no let's go to archive and see what the archive mailbox have been enabled or not I so want it to be enabled now so I don't have to wait for it you see for Ali it's enabled it says enabled for Aslan enabled and for Imran it's enabled and for everybody else is disabled so this is a good thing you see now rather than to say enable it says it's saying disable archive usage now we have a, a two more here so what what's archive and how much is it used it's just and recoverable item usage so this is pretty much it we are gonna wrap this video here if this video has helped you please rate comment subscribe and share and i will see you in the next one